Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what we have on the bench this week is an Allen key, but why? What is it for? So this Allen key actually operates this, uh, this machine screw here. And you know, this looks like just any old machine screw here. And there's, there's two on this side and there's one on this side, but this, what this machine screw actually is, is the carriage lock for this lathe. It just tightens up this block uh, down here and pulls it up against the, the underside of the way here. And the reason you need a carriage lock is because on a lathe, when you're making a cut where you're cross feeding across, you're facing a part. So a parts in here spinning around and you can do two types of cuts on a lathe. You're either traveling in this direction, okay? So you're bringing down an outside diameter. So we'd be reducing, say, this diameter to a smaller diameter. Or on a facing cut, we're reducing the size of the material sticking out. And I'm oversimplifying things. I mean, you're gonna do a combination of those to make all sorts of features on a lathe. But when you're facing, uh, this cross slide is traveling across like this. Now, when it's making that cut, there's gonna be pressure pushing against this tool bit here and that pressure is pushing it this way. So what it wants to do is it wants to push the whole carriage this way. And I actually just ran into this, machining something on this. Uh, at first I didn't have any issues, but then as the tool pressure increased, I noticed that the carriage was actually pushing in this direction. And that's what this carriage lock is for. And this just tightens up and locks this guy in place. So now this carriage won't move either direction. This will still move. We can still feed in and out, uh, but the carriage itself won't move. Problem is this guy is, well, first of all, depending on what direction it's sticking, you know, to like if it's going, if it's pointing in this direction, it's kind of hard to get to. We don't have anything over here on this side and it flops around in here. You know, all the weight is of course on this end of the wrench and it's honestly kind of dangerous having it in here. I'd like to come up with something that works a bit better to operate this uh, this bolt. Now we could swap out the whole uh, the whole bolt for something else with the same threads. I mean, anything that threads into this block down here and pulls it up into the underside of this metal is going to lock the carriage. But I'd still like it to be removable. I mean, generally speaking, I don't think whatever we put here will be in the way. But I can't help but wonder what I'm not thinking about that I'm going to run into in the future that would leave me not wanting something in this spot. So I'd like it to be removable. So I'm thinking we take, we start with an Allen key and we basically make a handle for it that'll work for this spot. And maybe we'll even mark it carriage lock um, just in case anybody else is using the lathe um, or even just as a reminder to myself, you know, hey, I should probably lock the carriage if I'm doing a, uh, a facing cut with a lot of tool pressure. 5.94, 5.95. Point nine two, five point nine three. Yes, I think we could safely say that this is probably a six millimeter. It's undersized a little bit, so it can fit in the fastener. Um, one thing I did notice at looking at this one, uh, it actually looks like it's bent on this end. Now that isn't a problem for the usability of you know this Allen key by itself, but we probably don't want to start with this guy uh, for our project since we're going to need a straight length of this uh, that we can use to either press into something or work kind of around. Um, so let me grab my bin and see what else we have. All right, special thank you to the last, I don't know, three or four generations of my family that have refused to throw out any Allen keys because we've got a pretty nice selection of ones to work from here. And I don't generally use these, by the way, if I'm actually assembling something that I need an Allen key for. I just refuse to throw these out just as my dad and his dad and his dad did. These are the Allen keys I actually use when I'm working on something. I just won't leave one of these like in a position to, you know, continually adjust something because then I don't have it someplace else the next time I need it. I wanted a set of these, uh, these nice uh, Wera ones for years. And I finally got these maybe, I don't know, two, three years ago and no regrets. These are super nice. Uh, I'll link these down in the description if you're looking for a nice set of Allen keys. Another good brand is uh, PB Swiss. They also make really good Allen keys, but I do like these guys. All right, let's see if we can find another six millimeter Allen key in better shape than this one. All right, well, that was actually super easy. I found one, I think, on the second try here. And this one actually looks like a much nicer quality Allen key. I know it's not chrome plated like this guy, but it's straight. And dimensionally, it is much more accurate. I'm measuring either 5.97 or 5.98 on 
uh, on every uh, on every face here. So let's uh, let's work with this guy. So we'll take our measurements from this for the design. What I'm thinking, by the way, is sort of like a really short T handle. I'm thinking we cut a chunk of this off, just a straight section, maybe that long, and we design like a short T handle. And so imagine this is our T handle, so we don't have this piece down here, uh, and this just presses into it. And like I said, maybe we mark the top carriage lock. And from length, I'm thinking we make it long enough to sort of naturally fit like between a thumb and forefinger to torque it, but no longer. We don't want to be able to break this thing. And honestly, we shouldn't be putting that much pressure on the carriage lock anyway. I'm thinking the length should be just about right for thumb and forefinger, but not longer. And I definitely do want to have it coming out from the center in both directions. I want this guy to be operable from almost every any angle if I can sneak my hand in there and turn it. So let's see what we can come up with. All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. So I went for some cute points here on the top and did a little bit of an inset with a round over edge. Uh, and we'll do, this will actually be either white or gray filament, and this will be a black filament on the outside. I'm gonna try and print it standing up like this, which means we're gonna have some supports to clean up here on the bottom, but we're not gonna see that edge anyway. And I'm hoping for a nice clean uh, print here on the text. I'm a little bit worried uh, about how close that text is to the beginning of our round over. It is still flat there, but there's not a lot of room for it to lay down that black filament. So let's, uh, let's hit print and see how this comes out. All right, so our print's done, but I'm underwhelmed. Uh, I don't know, yeah, if I hold it the right way, you can see it there on camera. Uh, our lettering really kind of turned into a mess and I'd have quite a bit of supports to clean up on the bottom here as well by printing it down like this uh, to get this recess here on the top and as much as I like that recess I don't like it if it means that we have these short uh, lines here uh, coming into where that lettering is that just kind of turn into an ugly mess maybe I'm being too picky but not happy with that I'm wishing that we just went and printed this uh, face down without the recess then we won't have these supports to clean up either what I think I'm going to do is get rid of that curved edge uh, bring this surface this, this recess surface back up to this top, even with this top here, do a bevel instead and print this guy facing down on the bed. So hold on, I'll be right back. All right, and that is night and day. I don't know if the camera is picking it up. I'll try and get the light to hit it just right here. I mean, this looks, it's flawless. Uh, when you mix the, 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 not mix the colors, but when you print two colors face down on the the, uh, the textured bed, it just comes out so nice. Like it, it looks like a commercial product. Uh, I can't, I can't see the really, there's no gap in the, uh, the color at all. It just, see how close I can get work and still focus. It just comes out so crisp. It really, really looks good. And now we don't have those supports to contest with. So happy with this. Uh, I, you know, I missed the inset at the top. I wish we could have had kind of our cake and eaten it too, but I would not trade uh, this smooth lettering up here for the inset. All right, so now we have got to take our key here, uh, figure out how long a length of it we need to, to cut off and then press it into, oh boy, you know what? This one is, oh, this is, this right key? No, this is the wrong key. I was gonna say this one. This one just needs to go in the garbage. Look at that. All right, this is the correct Allen key. And I just actually noticed looking at it, it's actually engraved six millimeters. Uh, looks like they, uh, they punched that in there. So we probably don't want to cut that section. It's not that I want to retain the six millimeter marking. It's that I don't really want that marking sitting down inside the fastener and chewing it up over time. But I think we have enough just here in the end. I'm pretty sure if we cut it like pretty much right at the end of the marking there, press this into place, we should be just about right, but let me get some quick measurements and uh, we'll get this guy cut off. All right, I measured the depth of the fastener on the lathe and double checked my dimension for uh, our, 
our, um, our bore here on the tool. And we need exactly 20 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this guy at right at 20 millimeters. We'll cut it a little bit past that and then we'll kind of grind it down to our final dimension. All right, so we're about 22 millimeters, so we got about two millimeters we can take off. And if we're a little long, that's okay. We just can't go below 20 because then I don't think it's gonna go all the way into the fastener. All right, so this guy is still at least a millimeter and a half longer than we need. I'm a little bit nervous about taking too much material off. Um, <clears throat> we can always come back and grind a little off the end as long as we keep it cool. Uh, so what I did on this end, first I ground uh, a bevel into each one of the faces, and then I rounded it over a little bit as well. And that's just so that it starts into our plastic 3D printed part, um, hopefully without breaking it and without... Uh, scraping up the inside so much uh, that we don't have a tight fit on the rest of our, uh, our diameter here. So we could probably just hammer this guy in, maybe even use the vise, but I think the arbor press is probably the right thing to use. So let's get set up for that. Okay, so we're over here at the arbor press and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try putting just a piece of rubber underneath our part on this side so we don't mar it up or we hopefully don't mar it up. I'm honestly not sure how well this is gonna go. We might be making another one of these. So let's see. I think it's starting to go. Oh, I can hear a little bit of cracking. It's never a good sign. Yeah, it's really tight. Uh, we might end up having to increase the size of that bore a little bit. You know what, actually, I think some of our cracking is it flexing. Um, I think our rubber is, is uh, flattening down. Let me, let me get a piece of wood and try that. I think what's happening is this is actually bending up. That might be more the problem than uh, the flexing of this piece here. Yeah, I don't see any cracks here. Uh, I think that might have been uh, that might have been just the part itself stressing in, in, in this axis. Let me get a piece of wood and put that under there instead of the rubber. I think that might be all the way home. Let's try it. Now that works, uh, that works really well. Um, it is a little high, but you know what? I think I probably should have gone a little bit higher with this section here because I feel like if it was any lower, it would be actually hard to use. Like it's, it's just sticking up overall high enough uh, to use it. I think it's still low enough that it's not in the way. It shouldn't be in the way of our cross slide it shouldn't be in the way of anything else kind of going on over here. Um, but yeah, it's like it's just, it sticks up just high enough to actuate it. And you know what? It's like a, a quarter turn kind of does it. So that's loose. Yeah, a little more than quarter turn. So that's nice. So in that position, it's unlocked. Let me get you guys closer. 
Okay, so looking down from the top, that's unlocked when it is straight across like this. And then if we give it a turn like this, a little bit past quarter turn, now we are, we are locked. I mean, I'm sure I could probably force it, but the cutting forces aren't going to push it any harder than I am on the handle right there. And we come back to that position there, and I know that we are unlocked. And if I want it out of the way altogether, I can just lift it out of there. Yeah, super happy with just how low profile that is. I'm gonna actually put this up for sale on uh, piratemoto.com where I have some of the other things I've designed on this channel for folks that don't have 3D printers but would be interested in this because this is better than any of the other solutions I've seen for this. Uh, most people do like a post like this with a handle coming out and admittedly that does look really nice but it takes up a lot of real estate over here. Like it sticks up pretty high. It's not something you'd wanna leave in there permanently. I don't envision this guy being in the way but if it is, we can still just take it right out. And the only thing I might change in the design for this is I do like the overall height. I'm glad we didn't go any shorter on the, uh, the actual uh, steel hex. But I might adjust the design so that our, our OD here goes all the way down to the top of this bolt here. Just so this guy sits on there even better. Uh, because there's no reason for it to rock around like this. If we go all the way down with that OD to the top of the bolt, uh, it would sit even nicer. So I'm not going to bother doing that for the video, but I probably will print another one off. And uh, the STL that you guys see linked uh, on fpfdesigns.com, which is, that'll be linked down in the description of this video, will be the updated design that sits all the way down on top of the, uh, the bolt. And you don't have to do it in two colors. I mean, you could just print this in a single color. I do like that it says carriage lock. And again, I'm, I'm super pleased with just how crisp that came out. Guys, as a reminder, I'll be at East Coast Rep Rap Festival uh, tomorrow on Saturday and also on Sunday as well. It is in Maryland, and uh, I ordered up 320 of these stickers. I uh, threw this design together just like Monday of this week and did like a rush shipping on these because I thought probably ought to have something to hand out if I'm going to go. So I'll stick three or four of these to my shirt. So if you see somebody walking around with like three or four of these stickers on their shirt, that's me. Uh, say hi, and uh, I'll give you a sticker. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video. Always nice to have you around. And if by chance this is your first time on the channel, we do a new functional print like this guy every single week, every Friday. Sometimes it's just something that extends the functionality of an existing item like this lathe. Other times it's a totally from scratch design like the case that we did for the ride and power supply a couple weeks back. If you're into that sort of thing, I'm gonna ask you to do two things. Number one, hit that like button. Why? Well, I mean, obviously it helps out the channel. That's why everybody says it, but it also tells YouTube the kind of content that you like. So instead of seeing like bears and horses and serial reviews, you're gonna see more functional printing and just 3D printing stuff in general. And also, if you, if you like this content, if you enjoyed what you saw on this channel, hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.